Specific references to Palestine date back nearly 500 years before the time of Jesus. In the 5th century BCE, Herodotus, the first historian in Western civilization, referenced Palestine numerous times in Chronicle of the Ancient World, the histories, including the following passage describing Syrians of Palestine. They live in the coastal parts of Syria, and that region of Syria and all that lies between it and Egypt is called Palestine. The above translation by Harry Carter is featured in the 1958 Heritage Press edition of Herodotus' famous work. Both older and newer versions corroborate the accuracy of the reference. A.D. Godley's 1920 translation of the crucial line states, This part of Syria, as far as Egypt, is all called Palestine while Robin Waterfield's 1998 updated Oxford translation renders the passage this way. This part of Syria, all the way to the border with Egypt, is known as Palestine. A hundred years later, in the mid-4th century BCE, Aristotle made reference to the Dead Sea in his meteorology. Again, if, as fabled, there is a lake in Palestine such that if you bind a man or beast and throw it in, it floats and does not sink. This would bear out what we have said, he wrote. They say that this lake is so bitter and salt that no fish live in it, and that if you soak clothes in it and shake them, it cleans them. Two hundred years later, in the mid-second century BCE, ancient geographer Polemon wrote of a place not far from Arabia in the part of Syria called Palestine. While Greek travel writer Pausanias wrote in his description of Greece, in front of the sanctuary grow palm trees, the fruit of which, though not wholly edible like dates of Palestine, yet are riper than those of Ionia. Despite the Zionist claim, the Romans didn't rename Judea as Palestina until a hundred years after the death of Jesus, Contemporaries of Jesus also routinely referred to Palestine as, well, Palestine. For instance, in the first decade of the first century, the Roman poet Ovid mentioned Palestine in both his famed mythological poem, Metamorphoses, and his erotic elegy, The Art of Love. He also wrote of the waters of Palestine in his calendrical poem, Fasti. Around the same time, another Latin poet Tibullus wrote of the crowded cities of Palestine in a section, Masala's Triumph, in his poem, Delia. The noted Alexandrian Jewish philosopher Philo, writing around the first century CE, opined, also Syria in Palestine, which is occupied by no small part of the very populous nation of the Jews, is not unproductive of honorable virtue. The Jewish historian Josephus was born and raised in Jerusalem. A military commander in Galilee during the first Jewish revolt against the occupying Roman authority acted as negotiator during the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE and later penned vital volumes of Levantine Jewish history. His The Jewish War, Antiquities of the Jews, and Against Appion all contain copious references to Palestine and Palestinians. Towards the end of antiquities, Josephus writes, I shall now, therefore, make an end here of my antiquities, after the conclusion of which events I began to write that account of the war, and these antiquities contain what hath been delivered down to us from the original creation of man, until the twelfth year of the reign of Nero, as to what hath befallen the Jews as well in Egypt as in Syria and in Palestine, and what we have suffered from the Assyrians and Babylonians, and what afflictions the Persians and the Macedonians, and after them the Romans, have brought upon us. For I think I may say that I have composed this history with sufficient accuracy in all things. 
The claim that the Roman Emperor Hadrian, eager to punish Jewish inhabitants of Judea after the Bar Kopka revolt, officially changed the name of the region to Syria Palestina or simply Palestine in 135 CE and forced the Jewish community into exile is dubious at best, especially when, by then, the terms Syrian Palestine and Palestine had already been in use for over 600 years.